Women and girls waited in line for rations while listening in dread to a dull, constant roar of thunder coming from the east. The rumbling was the sound of 8,983 Soviet artillery pieces hurling a stockpile of 7 million shells at the German defenses on the Oder River line. The bombardment was so immense, in Berlin, houses shook, pictures fell from walls. Massive Soviet armies were now moving toward Berlin's western suburbs after breaking through German defenses on the Silo Heights. Now that the Russian horde was nearing the gates of Berlin, civilians began to wonder if there was any possibility that the Americans would arrive before the Soviets. The American offensive in the direction of Berlin had stopped at the Elba River. The Western Allies had no plans to conduct a ground operation to take the city. General Eisenhower, the Supreme Commander, lost interest in the race to Berlin and saw no reason to risk casualties by attacking a city that would have to be returned to the Soviets in accordance with the Yalta Conference Agreement. Given the staggering losses sustained by the Soviets, over 80,000 deaths and nearly 300,000 wounded, he was probably right. On April 20, 1945, the Nazi elite gathered one last time to honor their leader as Hitler marked his 56th birthday. Outside, in the increasingly ruined Berlin, housewives queued for food and news from the one-page newspaper Goebbels published. By this time, Soviet artillery was close enough to bombard Berlin's city center. With water, gas, and electricity services on the verge of breaking down, Berliners were now cooking half-rotten potatoes over a tiny fire enclosed by three bricks. People were unable to move through the streets due to shelling and Soviet air raids. At the Daily Staff Conference, Hitler announced he would stay and make his final stand in Berlin. Following the meeting, the leadership concocted reasons to leave Berlin, while Hitler was recorded on his final newsreel inspecting a group of Hitler youth boys who had won iron crosses for taking out Soviet tanks. The ailing Führer walked down the line, patting boys on the cheeks while holding his trembling left arm behind his back as his aides presented the medals. The last aircraft departed from Tempelhof Airport on the 21st. Berlin's defense headquarters was besieged by big shots, all demanding authorization to leave permits. Lieutenant General Raymond, who commanded Berlin, signed more than 2,000 such passes. Quite happy to be rid of the useless golden pheasants. With law and order breaking down, civilians turned out to loot. As the only source of marginally fresh meat left in the dying city, citizens cut up dead horses that lay all over Berlin streets. At the Führerbunker, Hitler studied his maps and ordered General Steiner, who commanded the 3rd SS Panzer Corps, to counterattack, smash through Soviet lines, and join up with the Berlin garrison forces. On paper, the 3rd SS Panzer Corps had three elite divisions, but in reality, his forces consisted of six understrength battalions with hardly any artillery and very few panzers. Steiner was astounded when he received the order. Being hard-pressed by Soviet forces, it was tough to just hold his ground, let alone advance. Early on the 22nd, a major war council took place in Hitler's bunker. When told that Steiner had not launched a counterattack, the Führer became enraged and threw a massive temper tantrum. Later, when he had cooled down, he came up with yet another solution. With the American stationary on the Elba River, the forces opposing them could be redirected to launch an attack into Berlin, he announced, after repositioning a few flags on a map. Hitler's written order was personally delivered by Field Marshal Keitel to Lt. Gen. Wenck's 12th Army, which was defending the Elba River line against the Americans. Given the depleted state of his force, Wenck was aware that ordering a major assault to liberate Berlin was futile. He nonetheless went through the motions of carrying it out in the hope that some German units could be saved from Russian captivity. On the 23rd, General Weidling was appointed the new head of Berlin's defense. He had at his disposal 45,000 regular army troops, 40,000 boys and old men in Volkssturm units. A collection of sailors brought in at Grand Admiral Karl Donitz's orders, and Luftwaffe flak units. 
All day on the 24th, the Soviets pushed hard against the increasingly desperate defenders, completing the encirclement of the city by the end of the day. All roads heading west were blocked by panic-stricken refugees. As the Soviets advanced, they captured scores of civilians and promptly began an orgy of looting and sexual violence that would become one of the most horrific features of the Battle of Berlin. On the 25th, the big news of the day was the meeting of Soviet and American troops at Torgau on the Elba River. This contact between the Soviets, advancing from the east, and the Americans, advancing from the west, meant that the two powers had effectively cut Germany in two. In Berlin, the Soviet advance slowed as they needed to bring up supplies. The Red Air Force spent the day strafing the defenders while the shelling continued. The morning of the 26th began with a massive bombardment as the Soviets resumed their offensive. The battle for Tempelhof Airport finally ended with the Germans withdrawing. Soviet urban fighting tactics were highly developed, based on their experience at Stalingrad. The Russians would use heavy firepower against houses or cellars showing the slightest resistance, followed up with troops hurling grenades and satchel charges, through holes in walls to silence defenders. Flamethrowers and dynamite aided the Soviets as they advanced house to house and room by room. The next day, on the 27th, the Germans prepared to defend the citadel, the center of Berlin. With its massive government buildings, King Tiger tanks from the 503rd SS Heavy Panzer Battalion, some just out of Berlin factories, dug in alongside SS infantry in the midst of the rubble. Against this, the Soviets advanced slowly, bogged down by rubble and house-to-house -house fighting. By the 28th, the German defenders were holding a strip less than 5 kilometers in width and 15 kilometers in length. The Spree River was the only significant barrier standing between the 3rd Shock Army and the Führerbunker beneath the Reichstag. The Malka Bridge over the Spree was still standing as the Soviet tanks approached. The Germans blew up the bridge in a cloud of dust and rubble. After the smoke cleared, the bridge sagged but was still passable for infantry. The Soviets stormed across under a hail of fire, securing a bridgehead over the Spree by midnight. There was the stench of burning flesh, decaying corpses, and destroyed buildings everywhere. At the same time, just a few hundred meters away, wedding bells were ringing in the Führerbunker as Hitler married his mistress Eva Braun. Weidling personally informed Hitler on April 30th that the defenders likely had enough ammo to last until the next day. With that information in hand, Hitler sometime after 3 p.m. shot himself, while Eva Braun took poison. Their remains were carried to the surface and cremated with little ceremony. That night, General Krebs contacted General Chukov, commander of the Soviet 8th Guards Army, to arrange a ceasefire. The following morning, Krebs met Chukov at his HQ to discuss the terms of German surrender, but the Soviets would only accept unconditional surrender. Due to their inability to come to terms, the pointless fighting continued. At the Führerbunker, while everyone was planning their escape, Goebbels's wife poisoned six of her children. After that, Joseph and Magda Goebbels made their way up to the Reichstag garden and shot themselves. Their remains were cremated on the spot. On May 2, Weidling took it upon himself to surrender the remnants of the Berlin garrison, bringing to an end the fighting in Berlin although it would take another six days before the overall surrender of Germany's forces to the Allies. Finally bringing to an end six years of fighting in Europe. If you liked this video, there are many similar high-quality videos on my channel.